Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 900. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Wow, we have a great video here with lots of tricks all in one. Here we have some formulas that are extracting records from here, but there's no criteria, so all the records are showing. When I add a criteria, it's looking down here, it's extracting just the Chevys. But for model, if I select 350N, I want to see the only the 350Ns, but if I select a broader category like 350, I want to see all of the 350s, whether the 350Ns, SWs, or just 350. In addition, we want to have this drop down right here determine what shows up in this drop down. So if I sh select Chevy over here, I want a certain drop down. If I select Toyota, I want a di different drop down. In addition, and since uh, this is kind of like filtering and these formulas can get kind of huge, we're going to use a helper column and to try and minimize the size of the formulas, the complicated nature of the formulas, and the time in which it takes to calculate. All right, let's go over to uh, sheet number 900. The first thing is our data validation. Alt-D-L clear. I should have cleared that. We want to come over here and look at a couple tricks. If I want to select type Chevy or Toyota, no problem. I can name this range type and use data validation looking there. But this cell is dependent on what's in this cell. So the trick is you name that range. Whatever the names are here, you use those as the names for the subsequent ranges. Now here's a great trick. We have three names to, to uh, give to some ranges. This has to be type, this has to be Chevy, this has to be Toyota. I'm going to use my mouse and highlight and then hold control and then select this range and then hold control and select this range. Three different ranges selected and now when I use the keyboard shortcut control shift F3. Control shift F3, it says create names from selection. It'll select the top row only. And three different names will be created instantly. I'm going to click OK. The keyboard shortcut to show name manager is Control F3. Notice all of the name keyboard shortcuts have F3. So Control F3 for name manager. Now I have some on the answer sheet, but here you can see. I just created that one, this one, and this one. Just like that with a stroke of a, a keyboard shortcut. All right, now let's do data validation. Alt D L tab. I don't want to allow anything. I want a list, so I type L. Whoops, I type T. L and tab. Now the third keyboard shortcut for defined names is F3. F3 is paste name. So I'm going to select type. Click OK. So now I can select type. Now we come here, Alt D L, Tab L, Tab, and we have to do a formula. Since we need to look to this cell and, this, and the stuff in that cell is text, we use the indirect. The indirect function takes text that's text that represents a reference and converts it back to a reference. All right, so let's see if this will work right here. Click OK. So we got our uh, Camry SE, and now if we do Chevy, we should have a different drop down. All right, so now we're going to scroll back over here. All right, helper columns rule. You can't always use helper columns, but if you want to have less complicated formulas and calculation speed, which is faster than you know, a larger array formula, helper columns are awesome. Now, the first two things is notice uh, when we did our selection over here, we have this is a direct comparison. So when I select Toyota here, I'm finding exactly Toyota. But here, I'm selecting uh, either something exact or something partial. All right. So when we come over to our helper column here, we have to say, is the thing in this cell equal to that? And is, this, is the thing we typed here contained in this cell? That means two things have to be true. This and this have to match over here. All right, so we're going to use the AND, A-N-D. We have two conditions to check, two logical tests. The first logical test is going to be, hey, 
that many cells relative cell references are you equal to that and I'm going to hit the F4 key that's the first logical test comma we have two of them the next one well I need to do partial text so I'm going to use the search function and I'm going to search for what the fine text is this I'm going to lock that using the F4 key comma within relative cell reference now this will return a number or an error and so we're only interested when it's a number right now it would be a number it would say 350 is trying to find 350 here if it finds it anywhere in there it tells it the position at which it found the 350 we're only interested when it goes down to the next one it will not search will not deliver a number it will deliver an error so we use the is number and we say is this a number if it's a number it'll return true if it's not, if it's an error, it'll return false or anything else. Now notice this screen tip says logical test, and that is a number search is delivering a true or false there. So now anytime we get a true there and a true here, boom, we will get a true in the cell. Now if I double click and send this down, I can see the records that match since it's a Chevy 350. There's a 350 there, a 350 end, so we're getting our correct string of trues and falses. Um, if we left it like this, then we have to do an array formula because we have multiple items, duplicates, that we're looking up. So let's do a little trick here. What if I were to, down here, just say add, take whatever is from above and add. Now, as soon as you do an operation, a math operation on true or falses, you're going to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. So if I copy this down, absolutely beautiful. Now if I copy this up, I'm going to have a problem because you can't add a word in a cell to a Boolean value, true or false, or to numbers. So instead of using the plus operator, we're just going to put this inside of the sum function. Okay, so we have sum, and the first number, as you can see there, number one is that thing. It's a true or false. And then this is the second one, right, the one above. But the sum, it'll just flat out ignore text. So here it'll give us one because we're getting a true from this plus nothing there. It will give us uh, a one. When I double click and send it down, we have our duplicates, but anytime we have a new number, that indicates this is a record of interest that we need to extract. All right, now let's come down here. Come over here. We're going to count our criteria. We need some formula to count what our criteria is. I'm going to use the max function. And I'm going to say the max of this. Oh, look at that. So now it'll say there's four records because it finds the biggest one. Now, actually, we're going to need another uh, cell over here, too. I'm going to copy that, paste it over here, just because I'm a bad typer. Now, I want to do a little uh, housekeeping here. I don't want this to say count criteria. I want it to say uh, count how many records we got matched. And this criteria entered, we'll use that in just a moment when we run into trouble here to help us show all the records. Now. Once one other thing to make this uh, the formula less uh, smaller and and have less to it, I'm just going to insert a column here and count the actual number of records. So I'm going to say number, and then I'm going to go uh, one. And there's a great trick here. This data set's only 14 re uh, records here. I just made it a little bit bigger than this. Uh, but if you had like 500 or 1,000, this is a great trick. You can right click the fill handle, drag down, drag up, point to series, say fill down the columns, one, and I want to stop at 14. That means it will just increment that number from the cell we right clicked. Add one, go down 14 rows. So it's a quick way if you have a gigantic data set. All right, uh, something like the paint. So I need some of these. All right, now, so we have these numbers here. The duplicates are not going to be a problem because we can do exact match lookup and it will only find the first one. So let's just go ahead and use index and match. Index. Now, the array, I'm extracting these records. I'm going to highlight the first column. 
and hit the F4 key once and twice. Lock it. So when we copy down, the dancing ants are locked. But when we move this over, copy this over direction, this dancing ants will move. Now, comma. Now we need a row number. Well, let's use match. We already have a way of, here's our rows. We want 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Match. And what are we looking up? Look, it is looking up this. Relative, so actually, I'm going to hit the F4 one, two, three time because this formula has to be copied over that direction. But when we copy it down, the dancing ants have to move, comma, within here. F4 key. And then the key is comma, and let's do exact match. That way it skips over the duplicates. Close parentheses, Control Enter. I'm going to copy this over, see if the I point to the uh, smart tag, fill without formatting. And it got the, because uh, when we copied this over here, it took the general format. All right, and then I'm going to copy this down. Actually, I can double click. Let's see if it works before we deal with that. If I change this to uh, 350N, it's got just 350s. 350, it's got all of the 350s. Now it's an easy fix here because we just say if this row is greater than that, Please show me blank. If the row, F4 three times to lock the column, but not the row, if that's greater than our count of matched records, F4, that's a logical test, comma, what do we want? Double quote, double quote to show nothing. Otherwise, the value of false is that simple index match. No big array formula here. Control Enter. And then drag it over, fill without formatting, and double click and send it down. So let's try this. If I change Toyota, there's zero, right? Because there's no 350. But as soon as I change this, the drop down changes. Camry LS. If I do the broader category Camry, it shows me all the ca uh, Camrys. Now let's see what happens when I do this. Oh. So what I want to do is amend this formula. Again, we're trying to avoid. We have a simple lookup function here. We're doing all the complicated logical stuff here. I'm going to count how many uh, criteria are entered. I'm going to use the count uh, that says uh, how it counts non-empty cells. So right now, it's going to count non-empty 0. Um, and now we need to come over and uh, change this. Now right now this is an AND. Both things are true, but notice none of this is true. So what we'd really like is if nothing's entered in here to have the numbers 1 to 11 because there's 11 records or however many. So I'm going to say use an OR here. Right now AND it's all the way down zeros, but I'm going to do an OR. OR is different than AND. Any one of the logical tests comes out to be true and or delivers a true. So I'm only interested in is that cell right there, F4, equal to 0. That's the logical test for or, comma, and that and construction, that whole big thing right there, is the second lo uh, logical test for or. But anytime there's nothing entered, it's going to deliver uh, false, false. All right. But see, the cool thing about this is that when this is delivering false, this asking whether the question is this 0, deliver a 1 all the way down. All right, I think I have to add one extra parentheses after the OR. So this is the whole OR thing. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. So now we get the numbers 1 to 11. We get all of our records. And notice, for a moment there, these were both zeros. But now that it's counting and we have amended our, our logical formula over here, this says 11. This formula is comparing it to that. And it shows all, rec uh, all 11 records. Now, if I show Chevy, it shows me all the Chevys. The drop down changes. I show 350N. It shows me that. Partial text to look up. And boom, it looks like. Our little application here, in essence, to f simulate what filter does, but with formulas in a helper column, is working just fine. Now, there's one last thing we can do to make this super dynamic. We can convert this to a table feature. In 2007 and 10, if you convert it to a table, it has dynamic 
uh, ranges. So anytime you add a new record, subsequent formulas will automatically see those new records. In 2003, it's called list. In 2003, you do Control L. In 2007 and 10, Control T. Blanks have to be all the way around. I'm going to click OK. Now, and since we have a formula here, it will automatically uh, be copied down. So I'm going to add a new record here. Obviously, this table has to be big enough to accommodate all the records. I'm going to say Toyota. Toyota, and it is going to be uh, Camry. And it is gold for 18,000. And notice. This is already filled in. The table feature will automatically copy it down. That's one benefit. The formulas, you can see now, are all extending the proper uh, length down. And you can see we have our 12th record. And then we go ahead and go Chevy 350. All right, so um, situation to simulate filtering with dynamic tables. See you next video.